Well, well, look at this strange piece of art that I made with a gel plate. And believe it or not, it was printed from food. Watch me create this. Hello jelly fans! I recently made these jelly prints with food, as you might have seen in my last but one video, and worked out the results with fine liners, acrylic paint and colored pencils. But this one, of the same session, turned out so differently that I wanted to give it a video of its own. Here you see me doing the same thing, cutting lemons and lime fruit, garlic bulbs and a stem cabbage. Different from that last video, I'm using etching ink here, but all of this you can create with acrylics too. What I'm pressing into the thin layer of paint here is a piece of packaging carton that I cut open, followed by a cooking brush. Now a lime fruit. You should dry the printing surface of the fruit before you print. This is the stem cabbage that already looks spooky, doesn't it? No, it doesn't, it's a stem cabbage. And the garlic bulb that helps with vampires and food art. For some interest, I am pressing on a crumpled soft tissue. I love the patterns it makes. Stupid garlic, leaving me these nasty and smelly leftovers. I pick it up with some tweezers. This is actually a package that contained pencils before. I am pressing on the outside of it as it has this lagging that will probably leave some decalcomania effects. Note where that little hole is, becomes important later. Printing on Fabriano sketch paper, it has only 90 GSM. If you want to paint on it later, I'd recommend a higher grammature. First I thought, this is way too busy, but I started seeing things in there. I still couldn't see the main object in my print. It took me a while to notice that the stem cabbage was really a human skull. Sorry if that is a little morbid. If you feel, if you follow me, you already know me a bit. Having a lot of experience with death, unfortunately. And that is why I allow myself to deal with it in my art and get some healing by it. I really do. And it is probably not a coincidence that I always have skulls popping up in front of my eyes. Sorry for the bad lighting and the wobbly hand camera. It gets better in a minute. I want to say one thing about the paint. These little drops and blobs and halos and all these little nice effects are, as far as I know, only possible with the etching inks. But this doesn't mean you can't create an evenly interesting print with acrylics. Working on them with colored pencils works with both media. Only be a little bit careful not to put too much etching ink on the plate. Etching ink doesn't dry by air, as acrylics and other paints do, but they dry by merging into the paper. Therefore, if you take too much etching ink, it could take days or even weeks to dry. My thin layers usually can be worked over an hour or so later. And finally here, I saw that the cabbage was turning into something else. I'm a bit lame sometimes. Or rather, I get lost in detail and have to step back to see what it became. So I'm changing some outlines and shadows to shape it into a definite skull.
this was the pencil packaging and how it looked after I uh, took the paint up. And I was thinking briefly, turning all this into a collage and working this in there, but I decided against it. Um, you see me ripping up like a little piece of this, um, thinking about whether I should use it. Right there. But I didn't like it that much, maybe for some other artwork. This is a wonderful drawing ink. I use it all the time and a good thing for broader areas to paint on, it doesn't buckle the paper a lot, even not this one that has only 90 GSM. And you can't see any brush strokes, although I painted it on with a brush. I am creating sort of a frame that is offered to me here by painting the areas around it pitch black. I mean around the main themes. The garlic didn't print very well. I am giving it some lines with a wonderful brush marker by Uniball that has an extra fine tip. But it doesn't turn into a garlic bulb again and I don't want to overdo it so I leave it like that. Then I am drawing this little hole with a red pencil. I don't know why, I just had some higher beings here who told me make it red. And then I made one more little ball in the skull red, so there is a connection. The skull looks to the right, the lime side, which also connects to the brush there that symbolizes my artwork. And so on. Don't fall for my interpretation talk. I simply don't know what made me create this one. But I'm very happy with the result and I hope it was interesting and inspiring for you to watch me. Always feed and follow your imagination. See you next week. Bye!